this conference will now be recorded so we are discussing about bomb bill of material now i'll go to transaction code cs01 network finished material plan bomb switch and valid now when i press enter okay already we have created one bomb now can we have can we maintain sub items for each sub component in bomb yeah i'll go to cs02 observe guys i'll go to cs02 cs02 is change bomb yeah enter the finished material plant bomb is one you just press enter now these are the sub components okay now the question here is can we maintain sub items for each sub component in bomb is it possible first of all um yeah yes perfect okay it is possible we can maintain sub items for each sub component in bomb okay now maintaining sub items for each sub component in bomb if you want to maintain for the existing bomb you go to change bomb to the transaction code cs02 if you want to create a new bomb then you go to the transaction code cs01 and you maintain that so go to cs01 finish material plan bomb usage and valid form press enter now see in alternate bomb what will happen you will get alternate bomb now again i will maintain the sub components Now, select the lanet of the sub component. Select the lanet of the sub component and click on sub items. Now, before that, you just observe: are these indicators are activated? No, not at all. Now, select the lanet of sub component and click on sub items. And here, you have. installation point so here i will enter 100 dash 110 sub item count what is this 100 dash 110 this is also a metal master which is created like r dash tm001 only but this 100 dash 110 metal is already available which was predefinitely given by standard sec so i am using that so even while you are practicing if you want you can maintain the same press enter If you want to maintain multiple sub items, yes, it can be recommended. Now, at the moment you go back, now see guys here, the sub item indicator has been activated. Are you able to see guys? Yeah. Yeah. What does this mean? It means the sub component further contains sub item. The indicator, if this indicator is activated for any material. please remember this sub component further contains the sub item okay yeah now in the similar manner select the sub component to sub items dash Select the sub component. Click on sub items. Under dash one thirty. So like this, the sub item indicator will be activated.
So like this, you can make it sub items for each sub component. Now oh, just now we have seen single bomb and multi-level bomb, isn't it? So here, so far the bomb what we created is single level bomb. Okay. Now we create a multi-level bomb. For that, first I will create a bomb for semi-finish component. The semi finished component plant bomb usage wild form. Then present action. So here I'll enter the sub components. Quantity. Quantity. Press enter. So as I told you, 100 dash 110. 120, 130 are the SAP given standard materials which are already available in the system. So I'm using yeah. it. Then you save. So we have created a bomb for semi finished. Yeah. Now I'll go to create a multi level bomb. CS01. Yeah. Enter the finished material. Plant. Yeah. And bomb usage and valid from and valid from the center. Now, see this time you'll get alternative bomb as three. Yeah. yeah. Now, I'll enter one by one the sub components. You just observe this what I mean. The moment when the press enter, you just observe this indicator, guys, carefully. See here, the assembly indicator has been activated, isn't it? It is. So what does this mean? It means R dash TM 004 is a sub component where it further contains bomb. Where it where it further contains its own bomb. Because the assembly indicator has been activated. Okay, guys. So remember, whenever if this indicator is activated, then it specifies that the subcomponent further contains sub item. If this assembly indicator is activated, then the subcomponent further contains its own bomb. Then save it up. Then save the document. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So this is about the master data bill of material. Now next master data is work center. Now you observe. See in a sequential manner we are going. See first is Material master. What is the finished material you want to produce and what are the raw materials involved? Okay, we have yeah. seen. Yeah, then we have seen the bill of material information. Okay, oh. so to oh. produce this material, how much stocks of the materials of the subcomponents we require. So, what is this work center means to produce this finished material? What are the operations involved? So a work center is treated as a master data or it is a geographical or a physical location where a group of people performing a task or an activity or an operation. A work center is a master data and our organizational unit that defines where and when an operation must be performed. Okay. So that. Okay. A particular employee or a group of employees can perform their duties. Okay. Mm -hmm. So, a work center is also called as a geographical or a physical location where manufacturing activities take place. Therefore, a work center can be a machine or a people or a production line or a group of 
graphs. Okay. Fine. Now to create a work center, the transaction code is CR01. 0 to and to display list of work centers CR05 is a list of work centers display. Now I will go to create a work centers CR01 for a center. So enter the plant and I'll create work center as let's say TRW1. It's just an example, guys, or yeah. TR double C one. I'll create as a TR double C one and work center category. So here a work center can be a machine or a production line. See, in some industries, how this operation takes place is first you take the raw material, you place in the machine one, then they will do some operation. After that, you will place in the machine 2, then they will do some operation. Machine 3, some other operation. Machine 4, 5, finally you will get the finished material. This is one type of. So a work center is also called as a machine. In some industries, a work center is called as a production line. In the sense, somewhere you will get the, you will keep the raw material at the entry side and at exit side, you will get the finished material. Got the point? So this, the length process, we call that as a production line. So here, work center category, I will take it as a mission. <coughs> and copy from, I am copying from the SAP given standard work center, double one, double one. Okay. Press center. So what is the reason we are copying, I will tell you. Then under data selection, Select all the indicators. Then press enter. Okay. Then press enter. Then again press enter. Click on basic data. So TR double C one is a what center? What is that operation we are talking about? Late machine operation. Under basic data, what center category we have already created? Person responsible. Who is the person responsible to look after this act, this machinery and operation? Location. In which area this machine is located? That is production area. And supply area. Supply area is the area where the raw metal stocks are placed. From there, the production department will take the material. And usage, I want to use this work center for all task list types. Then, backflush. Let it, this indicator is activated. I will discuss what is this backflush later on. This is only to talk about this backflush. So it is under activated mode. So mainly, the meaning of backflush is automatically goods issue of the raw materials takes place. That is called backflush. So we'll discuss in the near future. Then come down. Now here standard value key SAP1. So here you can find out the standard value key setup time, machine and labor. If you want to add something else, that will be done through the configuration settings. Next go to default values. And here control key, text message, turning and suitability. Who are the suitable people to work on this machinery or equipment? So foreman, technician, mechanic, electrician, etc. Then set up by operator. And these wages you will get from the HR department. And how you are going to measure this setup time, division time, and labor time. So I want to maintain measure in hours. So therefore, I will maintain in hours HR. Then click on capacities. So I enter the capacity, set up formula, processing formula, and tier down formula. Yeah. Then 
scheduling. And if you want to see the formula, what is the formula means? Now let us say. Now let us say you have SAP 002. What is that? Machine time. How the machine time will be calculated? Now you place a cursor on the processing formula and click on this display formula. When you click on this display formula, here you can see formula. Machine, operation quantity, base quantity and If you want to see labor time, then select, click on display formula, labor, operation quantity, base quantity, and operation quantities. Like that. scheduling. Okay. And in the costing tab, so the reason why we need to, we are copied to create a concentrate from the SAP given, I'll tell you. So start time, enter the today's date, Jure 8, Jure 8, 2018. End date by default, it is system default, 31, 12, double nine, double nine. In the real time, this controlling area, cost center, and this activity types, you will get from the controlling department, that is from controlling consultant. So the PP consultant will never create this controlling area, cost center, and activity type. The other reason, we have copied and we have created our own work center from the SAP started because unless and until if you don't have this cost center set up activity types it's not possible to create a work center and you cannot calculate the setup time mission time at all that's the reason we are copied from the SAP given otherwise in real time you will go for new entries and we can create because there the data will be given by the controlling department you got the point guys what I'm saying yeah, 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 we follow, yeah. Now, double click on the capacity. And here, who are the people performing this operation? You want to maintain that op machine, be the persons who are performing this activity. So click on this HRMS and click on HR work center. Enter your work center, press enter. Now place the cursor here, then place the cursor on the person and click on create relationship. And click on create relationship. And before that, before that, you double click on the capacity category. Double click on the capacity category. Now, what is the operation you are performing? Late mission operation. Now, when you double click on the capacity category, observe guys here, what is the start time? What is the finish time? What is the length of breaks here? Total operating time is seven. And in the number of individual capacities, how many people are working on this operation, on this machine? Two people. So operation time seven into two. Totally, 14 hours are required. So like this, the wages, or the payments are done to that workers. Okay? Suppose if, if three people are working, so replace two and you enter three. Seven into three, 21 hours. Are you able to see guys here? Yeah. yeah. Sure. yeah. So number of individual capacity means number of people, workers who have worked. So total two workers. So if each person performing uh, performing a task, this late master operation for seven hours, if it is two hours, uh, two people means totally 14 hours. Then I will maintain the details of these two people who are there. So click on HRMS. Now select, click on this work center. Place the cursor on the person. Click on create relationship. Now here I will enter it. One, double zero. Press enter. So there is employee ID. 1000. So here, Muller is one person. Okay. I can place the cursor on the person. I will enter 1001. So these are already created by the HR consultants. Then you got Michael, another person. 
you want to mention the people who are working on this lathe machine operation can be maintained. So go back and finally save it up. Similarly, I'll create other Similarly, follow the same procedure to create the work center. Similarly, So like this, what are the operations are there that can be created in the system? So. Now if you want to see the list of work centers, you go to CR. So what, what transaction can was this? Just to view the work centers. CR05. Oh, CR05 to view work centers, yeah? Yes, yes. yes. CR05 okay. is a transaction. To display work center. Now here you can see your work center 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Okay. Light mission operation, drilling, punching, boring, painting, finishing. Got it, guys? Yeah. We um we use these we use these at, um we have a press and paint facility where we press the metal and then paint it and uh the press the machines use work centers for that. So this is helpful okay. for that. Okay. Okay. We don't we don't our department doesn't actually set up the work centers but it's helpful that we can view them. Okay, okay. So this is information we have made. Now next is, before going to the routing, we'll discuss about production resources tools. What is a production resources tools means? When you are performing these operations, lathe, machine, drilling, punching and all, you may use some devices like drawing, panner, spanner, voltmeter, multimeter, speedometer, ampere meter, etc. So that information also, the tools information also can be maintained in the form of production resources tools. Okay? So a production resources yeah. tools is used to carry out an operation for an order. For example, it's a drawing and spanner. Okay. 
volt meter, speedometer, ampere meter, etc. They will be issued to work center where the operation will be carried out along with the order components. Then production resource tools will not be consumed in order like material. Once the operation is over, you can return the PRT back to stores. Okay. And the PRT tools are created in the service system in the form of a material master. We are using a metal type called FHM. So how you are going to maintain this information? Voltmeter, multimeter, speedometer, ampere meter, etc. By creating a material master for these materials. Okay guys. So I will create a material master for production resource tools. So here let us say D R as I create a PRT underscore Z1 FHMI. We need to use the metal type FHMI. Click on select views, select the views, click on operation levels, and solution, hold the meter, each middle group, and the uh, in purchasing view. Purchasing group at the then MRP one, MRP group, the MRP type, the MRP controller and lot size. So for group type, it's okay. So you want to go for external power internal, whatever it is. Okay. Work scheduling, production supervisor, production store location, production scheduling time. And in production resources tools, maintain task list usage. You need to perform for all operations. Therefore, I will maintain as a 009. It refers to for all task list times. And control key. So for all functions. Reference date for start and for finish. Then I'll get Yati Z copy from Yati Z. I'll create another. Multimeter. Now we we'll go for the next master data routing. So, in a general definition, series of operations involved to produce a finished material is called a routing. In a simple words, routing is defined as sequence of operations or series of operations involved to produce a finished component is called a routing generally. Okay. So a routing is a description of which operations have to be carried out and which order to produce a finished material. As well as the information about the operations and the order in which they are carried out. So a routing car also contains details about the work centers which are to be carried out. Then the production resources tools like voltmeter, multimeter, speedometer, jigs and fixtures and also contains quality inspection characteristics and the standard values for execution of individual operations. So all these are saved in 
routing so routing is defined as the sequence of operations involved to produce a finished component is called a routing and the routing data contains all your bill of material information work center information production resource tools information and the quality inspection characteristic information all is maintained in the routing and these routings are classified into different categories they are standard routing if you want to create a standard routing the transaction code is ca010203 that is create change and display a reference operation set ca111213 create change and display rate routing ca212223 create change and display reference rate routing ca313233 create change and display so the standard routing is mostly and widely used for for almost all the industries so always we'll use standard routing is used for discrete manufacturing process rate routing is used for repetitive manufacturing process reference operation set and reference rate routing are used for rework of the production orders this is very important so we majorly use for standard routing and rate routing is for repetitive manufacturing Yeah, guys. Yeah. 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 So go to the transaction code CA zero one. Enter the finished material, plan, and key date. Enter the material. Finish material, plant, and key date. Press enter. Now you get group number one. So for for fun for one finished material, we can maintain multiple routings. So the initially you get one. Now here usage. That is one for production. And status four. It's released. No. And planner group from lot size one and two lot size will get nine 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 up to eight six nine. Next, click on operations. Click on operations. Now here we need to enter the what center we want to create. T R W C one. Press enter. And here, the moment you press enter, you'll get the control key automatically. You'll get the control key automatically. Now double click on this control key. Double click on the <coughs> control key. Sorry. Double click on the control key. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So I can double click on the control key. System will take to the next screen. Now see all of you. So what is the operation we are performing, guys? Late machine operation. Then here you need to enter setup time, machine time, and labor time. So you enter setup one hour, labor two hours, total four hours. Enter. Go back. Okay. Then T R W C. One second. So copy this. So I'm going to get this information. Double click the control key. Delete this operation. Now, double click on the control key. See, set up machine. Then again, T R W C three. Double 
करता फिर करना कर करके यार डबल सी फाइव एंटर डबल क्लिक करके कंट्रोल के इसे पेंटिंग ऑपरेशन सिग्नल डॉक मार्क टेक मोड है अब फाइनली फिनिश ऑपरेशन डबल क्लिक करके कंट्रोल के So like this, first we need to maintain all this both sectors and the set of time, mission time and limit time. Now, for each operation when you are performing, we are going to use some tools, some devices. Now how you are going to maintain that information? To, yeah, to maintain the tools, select the line of work center and click on the at the top of the screen. So it means while performing lathe of operation, what are the tools you have? So PRT underscore Z1. Control key one. Enter. If you are using another one, again you click on the material and you can enter the PRT tool also. Okay. Like this, you can have so many options. So it means while performing lathe operation, we are using the devices, we will meter and multi -meter. in the similar manner. And here you can see the PRT is activated. It says that this operation is using some tools. Similarly, yeah. follow the same procedure. To assign the tools. So for painting and finishing, we don't want it. So I'm not painting. Got the point, guys? We're not charging yeah. any paint operation. We need yeah. some paint. Yeah, tell me. Hello? Hello? Yes. Yeah, you're asking something. Yeah, there. Oh, no, we were uh, we were talking amongst ourselves. It's, it's not too okay. not okay, fine. So for painting operation, finishing operation, we don't want to use any tools, so I'm not going to maintain. Okay, next. Okay. Now, we need to assign the subcomponent for each operation. Okay, so we need to assign the subcomponents for each operation. Yes. Okay. Now, Click on component allocation. As you have maintained bomb alternate one, alternate two, two, alternate two, three. 
So which alternative war bomb you want to use it? So you double click on that. Then what happens? Subcomponents are displayed. Now you select the subcomponent. One. Click on new assignment. Okay. So click on yeah. operation. So I want to assign to first mission. Press enter. Okay. So to change to blue color. Again select the subcomponent to click on new assignment. Click on operation. Sub second operation. Mm -hmm. Then select the subcomponent three. Click on new assignment. Click on operation. Subcomponent three. Then subcomponent four. Click on new assignment. Operation. Like this, you can assign the subcomponents to the operations. Okay. <laughs> this is called component allocation. Now, we make a sequence of operations, sequence numbers. For that, we click on this sequences. Click on the sequences. Click on inventories. Now here we have two types of sequences: alternative sequence, parallel sequence. Alternative sequence means after performing the first operation, second operation will go. Next third operation, then fourth operation, then fifth operation, sixth, etc. <clears throat> so okay. if you want to go parallelly, you said parallel sequence. As you wish. Press enter. You got the sequence number one, and here return operation. You select the operation. Drop down. Which operation you want to get first? So T R W C one first. So press enter. So you got the sequence number one. Go back. Again, click on new entries. Select parallel sequence. Enter. Select the work center under return operation. Enter. Go back. Click on new entries. Select the sequence category. There is parallel sequence. Enter. Then I select third. Enter. Go back. Click on new entries. Select the sequence category, parallel sequence. Then, support sequence. Enter. Go back. Click on the entries. Parallel sequence. Enter. Select the sequence category. Go back. Again, click on the entries. Parallel sequence. Enter. Select the. So like this, we maintain the sequence category. So here you can see sequence numbers. Are you able to see, guys? Yeah. Mm -hmm. If you want to maintain, for example, okay, if you want to maintain master inspection characteristics, can also be maintained. This one. Yeah. Required. If required, you can maintain master inspection characteristics. Otherwise, save the document. Save the document. Now the system will throw a message. Routing was saved under the group number so and so. Routing was saved under the group number. So, so. so this is about routing master data. And here you can see routing mode. Okay. So sequences. 
assigning the subcomponents to what sentence? Production resource tools assigning work center cost center activity. Now next is production version. This is mainly used in the repetitive manufacturing process only. What is the function of this production version is? For example, if you want to produce a finished material and if you have multiple composition of bombs, work center and routings to produce a finished material. Listen carefully. If you are maintaining multiple bombs, multiple work centers, multiple routings to produce a thin component, then we'll go for production version. Okay. So production version is used to describe the production process to be used for planned order and for production order. So mm -hmm. whenever we create or maintain multiple bombs, multiple work centers, multiple routings to produce one finished component, then we maintain production version. Okay. So depending upon the production target levels of the finished material, we maintain production version. So depending upon the production target levels of the finished material, we maintain the production version. So the production version contains the following information. Bill of material, True. work center or production line or routing. And to create a production version, the transaction code is C223. The transaction code is C223. Okay? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So go to the transaction code C223. Enter the plan. This material, the MRP controller, key date, press enter. Here again enter the this material. Let us say I can enter as a T001. Next question one. Valid from 08082018 from not says 1 to not says 100. Press enter. Okay. Now double click on test status. So you get another screen. So task list types, right? Function. Routing. And maintain the routing. Marshall data. So you'll get the indicators here. Now click on check. The system will check whether this master data's routing, bomb, or center are available or not. It says task list exists, bomb exists. Go back. Now you can see they are all. Go to the from large size to large size, zero to five hundred per second. Double click on test status. Routing, bomb usage,
depending upon the production targets and also the finished material. So I not want to. Double click on test status. Like this, you can maintain as in this is as it. So, with this, we complete the master data set production planning. So, these master data are very, very important. If you are thorough with all these master data, then it will be good. You know the production versions. <clears throat> Is there a way to check them, the transaction for that? Yeah, C223. There is no other transaction. Which okay, fine. Okay, guys. Yeah, you have seen this. Suppose now you have maintained all these master data, right? If you go to create a production order, the system has to disclose this. So, for example, C O zero. I will not create production order just for your understanding purpose. Enter. Production plan, planning plan, order type. Okay, R dash T right? I will enter total target until I have end date 3108 2019. Okay. Now, if you click on the master data, are able to see guys, routing, <coughs> bill of material, yeah? Yeah. You are able to solve this master data. And here, the production target is going on the other side. Are you going to go into more detail about the this this screen the production order screen because we have some questions about uh the scheduling at the bottom you know it says backwards now here at the top of the screen you have operation menu if you click on operation menu you can see all of your work centers go back you click on component area, you display your sub components along with the development properties. Are you see guys? Yeah. Then go back, you can click on sequence of operations. There is option for sequence. System displays, your sequence of operations. So all the master data are available in the production. So this we'll see. What is this backward scheduling? Okay. And if you click on schedule order, you can schedule. Scheduling is scheduled. Then you can create a option. So once if you are able to get all the master orders which you have created, then the system will allow to create a production. Okay? Mm -hmm. so now, we'll go for concept call. This is what we 
this uh, material requirement planning and you will have different types of bombs also you have sorry different types of scraps also you can maintain component scrap assembly scrap okay opposite scraps of the bomb okay yes so the next topic we are going to look up is material requirement planning yeah we call it as a mrp so the main function of mrp is to guarantee the material availability that is used to produce or to procure the requirements on time both for internal purpose and for sales and distribution this process involves the monitoring of the stocks and in particular the automatic creation of procurement proposals for purchasing and production mrp stands for material requirement planning a set of techniques that contains bill of material data inventory management data and master production schedule to calculate the requirements of the material is called mrp material requirement planning okay and the whole mrp procedure is classified into three categories the total sap pp planning the sap pp module runs on this mrp procedure class into three categories deterministic mrp that is independent requirement planning that is called demand management next consumption based planning and master production scheduling this consumption based planning is further divided into three categories they are reorder point planning again under this we have automatic reorder point planning manual reorder point planning then forecast based planning and time based planning so this consumption based planning is totally deals about the procurement of the raw materials okay we totally deals about the procurement of the raw materials so here the pp module integration with mm takes place okay so this is the total planning procedures what see here. consumption based planning forecast based planning the prior point is further divided into automatic and manual so, like this so these are the planning procedures we we'll discuss so consumption based planning is a planning where mm integration with pp takes place or pp integration with mm takes place that is here we are going to see the procurement of the raw material that is external procurement we will cover then we'll start with the reorder point planning okay yeah so what is reorder point planning? now we are following now see guys here again i'll show what are the total types of planning we have so one is independent requirement planning and demand management second one consumption based planning and the third one mass production schedule so consumption based planning is a planning where exactly the integration of pp with mm takes place here we are going to see the procurement of the raw materials mm -hmm. so first we will see this consumption based planning then we will go for our production planning okay then we can understand the process So unless and until if you don't have the raw materials, there is no what called production. That's the reason. <coughs> That's the point, guys. Now, what is reorder point planning? So reorder point is a critical stock level, which is set based on the consumption values of the material and planned delivery time. 
whenever the stock falls below the reorder point planning the system automatically generate the requirements and those requirements are con further converted to recruitment proposals basically reorder point is selected for the materials depending upon the consumption values of the material and lead time for delivery the reorder point should be greater than or equal to safety stock and the reorder point is available for planning and can be treated as a available stock Mm -hmm. So, what is this concept of reorder point means? Whenever the stock of a particular material reaches to reorder point, that is break-even point or less than reorder point, the system will generate the requirements. Then you run MRP, and those requirements are further converted to planned orders or procurement proposals. Again, this reorder point planning is divided into two types: manual reorder point planning. And automatic reorder point planning. Now, manual reorder point planning. So, in the case of manual reorder point planning, the reorder point is selected manually based on the consumption values of the material and lead time for delivery. So, in the case of manual reorder point planning, the reorder point is selected manually by the user when you are creating a material master. and automatic yeah. reorder point planning in the case of automatic reorder point planning the reorder point is selected manually by the system automatically automatically the system decides the break even point there is reorder point based upon the consumption values of the material and lead time for delivery so if you want to go for automatic reorder point planning so we need to maintain forecasting requirements in the material master as a result by taking the previous consumption values of the material the system will display the break even point at forecast based planning is is a special procedure in consumption based planning which is based on the future requirements okay by taking the requirements in the future requirements predictions calculated by the forecast and the next one is time phase planning is very rare cases nobody or no companies uses this planning it is a special procedure in consumption based planning which is based upon seasonal planning so if you want to carry out time phase planning okay so yeah. you need to maintain all the requirements in the material master so which is totally a seasonal planning time phase planning is totally a seasonal planning okay so these are the three types of plannings where the consumption based planning takes place and here we are going to discuss about the procurement of the raw materials the purchasing of the raw materials and where exactly the production planning model is integrated with another model called materials okay 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 guys So I think uh, I'll take the break now. We'll see after. Okay. The okay. How long? So I think uh, it's uh, as per your uh, 